So welcome to this video where we are going to look at a very nice application of numerical linear algebra. We're going to look at a way to make sound visible. So as you may recall from physics that you had in high school, if you look at a string like a guitar string and if it vibrates producing a certain tone, then you know that it has a standing wave which means that here is a little picture if you would look at a graph where on the horizontal axis you put the x coordinate on the vertical axis you put the height of the string at a certain moment in time then basically what we have is a function you could describe that with a function u that depends on both x and t so at a certain location, you know the height of the string as a function of time. And then what you also know from physics is that there is parts of this string where we do not have any motion, like here. And there the height remains zero in time. And then here in red are what are being called anti-nodes. And there the amplitude is maximum of the height of the string as a function of time. So let's look at a short video that shows such a string and which of the standing wave patterns that can occur here. So more generally, if you look at sound, what sound is, is air that is vibrating. There's pressure waves traveling through the air. So if I'm speaking, my voice, my vocal cords, they make the air vibrate. The pressure waves reach your ear and they're being translated back into something that your brains understand as me talking. Also, if you look at musical instruments like string, membrane and so on, it's all different ways of making air vibrate. So these are things that we cannot see yet. And there has been a person called Ernst Gladny and he did an experiment to try and make sound visible. So what he did was take a thin metal plate and he fixed it in the middle, as you can see on the stand here. So if you look here in the middle, the plate is fixed and the ends are free to vibrate. And then he used the bow of his violin to make the plate vibrate and he poured a little bit of sand on top of it. Now, just as we have seen for the guitar string, which has parts that do not move, the notes, for a 2D situation like here, for the plate, you get nodal lines. So you get lines that do not vibrate and other parts of the plate have maximum vibration. So he wrote this down in a book called Entdeckung über die Theorie des Klanges. And he's called the father of acoustics because he was the first one to do these types of experiments. So in this book in, from 1787, he made drawings of the patterns that he observed when the plate was vibrating. So here on the next slide, you see a couple of the drawings from Ernst Gladny's original book. So he made these himself. Now what we will try and do is see if we can do MATLAB simulations to reproduce these results. Now, before I do that, I would also like to look at a modern version of his experiment. So here, and the link is below if you want to read a little bit more about it, what they did is take again a, a thin metal plate and take salt or sugar and pour that on top of it. And they use a little loudspeaker to make the plate vibrate. And at certain frequencies, you will see these nice patterns occurring. 
So this is a bit of a longer video, this is three and a half minutes, so I'm going to play it for you now. So a couple of things you may have observed in this video is that if the at, at certain frequencies, you could see the frequencies in Hertz to the left of the picture, special patterns occur. So those are the frequencies where you have standing wave patterns in the plate. And what you also see is if the frequency goes up, these patterns get more complicated. So you get more interesting, more complicated patterns for the higher frequencies. Now what we will do in the next part is try to write down the mathematical equations describing the movement of this plate. And we will try to compute the patterns that you have seen and also the frequencies that belong to that. And what we will see is that this leads to an eigenvalue problem. So we have studied eigenvalue problems during the course and the, this, this results in a, in a big eigenvalue problem. So let's see, the mathematical model. So what we will do is we will consider the plate to be in the domain in R2 from minus one to plus one, both in X and Y direction. So we, we are dealing with the square plate here. And then we will say that the vertical movement at position X of Y as a function of time is described by Z of X and Y and T. So what we do 
is we look at the differential equation and what you see is that apparently the second derivative of z with respect to time occurs in there and we have fourth order derivatives with respect to x and y. Now if we assume that the solution can be decomposed, can be factorized, it can be written as a function that only depends on time, times a function that depends on only on x and y. Then if you substitute that into the partial differential equation, what we get is this. So this is just computing the partial derivatives and substituting that into the differential equation. Now the interesting bit is if you divide by u times t here, you get an equation and I've circled three parts of it. So the blue part to the left of the equal sign depends on time on t only. The yellow bit depends on x and y. Now if you have a quantity, so they're equal, and on the one hand it only depends on t, on the other hand it only depends on x and y, that means it has to be a constant. So I call the constant lambda here in the red circle, and lambda is called the separation constant. So this technique, you don't have to study that. If you do further courses like in partial differential equations, you will learn how to do this. But here I just want to illustrate how we get from partial differential equation to, in a minute, an eigenvalue problem. So this is the technique that we use, called separation of variables. And the separated partial differential equation is copied onto this slide. And what you see now is if we just look at the left bit, so let me circle that. So if we look at the t bit and then say that equals lambda, then this leads to an ordinary differential equation for capital T. So what we see is that capital T should be a solution of this uh, ordinary differential equation. And we know the solution here and it's cosine and sine and there's two constants in there depending on your initial conditions. Similarly, we could also be looking at the x and y part. And if you write that out, one second, there was a bit of a hiccup here in the presentation. If you write it out, you see that you get a partial differential equation for the function u, because u is a function um, that has two arguments. It depends on two variables, x and y, at least to a partial differential equation involving derivatives both with respect to x and with respect to y. Now this here, we can, we can do a little trick here. So we introduce the w function, which is uxx minus uxx minus uyy. And then we have a partial differential equation for w. And this is hard to solve. So what we do is we use finite differences. We replace the second order partial derivatives with a central difference approximation. And that leads to this equation. And what you see is if you would substitute back for w the u, that we basically get a large eigenvalue problem for the vector u. So I omit the details here, but I just want to show you that this quite naturally leads to an eigenvalue problem. An eigenvalue problem that we can solve. So um, there is a MATLAB script for this. And if you compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, then the eigenvalues correspond to the frequencies at which these standing wave patterns will occur. And the eigenvectors, they give these nice colorful pictures that you see here. So in red, I have drawn the nodal lines. The, the nodal lines are where u remains zero as a function of time. And the black and white values are an indication of the vibration occurring there. So that's the part where the plate is moving. And of course, if you now drop salt on top of this plate and this plate is moving like this, then all the sand or sugar is being moved from the parts where the plate is moving and it ends up at the nodal lines. And you see that the patterns that Gladney observed and drew in his book have a very, uh, they, they are very accurate. They're very close to the numerical results that we have found here. So, what we can also do, we've also seen this video. So what I've also done is captured a couple of screenshots from the video and computed the corresponding eigenvectors using our MATLAB script. And what you see here is that you get a great um, resemblance of these two patterns. So at the top, you see screenshots from the video and below you see what I have computed using my MATLAB script. So you see that there is a great uh, likeness here. 
So what we have seen here is that you can model the vibrating plate using partial differential equations. Now, they are too difficult to solve, so what we have done is we have used a finite difference discretization of this partial differential equation. This leads to an eigenvalue problem, a large eigenvalue problem, so the matrix in this eigenvalue problem um, has considerable size and it has many zeros, so it's a sparse matrix. And finally, we see that there's an excellent agreement between the numerical results that we have found and both the drawings that Klopny made in his book in 17th, um, 18th century and the video that we have seen. So I hope that you liked this example of what you can do using numerical linear algebra and the techniques we have studied for finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. If you would like to read more about this, there is this paper. It's from two of the authors of the textbook that we use for our course. And in this paper, they both compute the Glapney figures and they also look at the bridge. So if you recall, we have studied uh, the collapsing bridge that showed a similar type of behavior. Um, the bridge could be modeled as a thin plate that starts to vibrate due to the wind. And this is the paper that describes all of that. So that concludes this video. Hope you liked it. And if you have any comments, please let me know. I'll see you in the next video.